Hey everyone, welcome to a video on firearm modes in Neo FPS. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to change up the functionality of your weapons by using weapon modes to enable or disable different firearm modules, along with ways to expand on that system using events and scripts. I'll put some timestamps in the description so you can skip to the relevant bits, but now let's just take a look at a couple of uh, mode switching examples from the demos. So this is the assault rifle from the demo facility scene. And by default, its firing mode is set to the fully automatic trigger group. Looking in the bottom right of the HUD, you can see that full auto tag above the ammo counter. So if we hold the trigger, then we fire off a good chunk of the magazine. I can then switch modes, and you can see the gun bounce a little bit when I do that, and then the HUD changes to, say, semi-auto. So if we hold the trigger now, we just get the one gunshot. Switching modes again, and now we have the burst fire trigger group. Okay, one of the other guns that has this mode switching feature built in is the sniper rifle here. So this one, you can see in the hood that we're set to scope. And if I zoom in, uh, if I aim down sights, then we can get that nice render texture scope. Hitting middle mouse button, and we switch to a red dot sight on top. And the hood updated to show that. Okay, so let's have a look at exactly how these are set up. So first up, I'm in the Demo Facility folder here, and I'm going to expand the Weapon subfolder. And in there, we're going to find the Assault Rifle. So if I open this prefab, and then we look at the main firearm component itself, then you can see in this trigger section here that we have an automatic trigger, which is bolded, and we have a semi-auto trigger, and a burst fire trigger. Now these trigger modules in the list don't have an eye icon next to them, so that means they're on the root of the firearm. And if we scroll down, and here they are. So the automatic trigger is the one that gives that continuous firing, and this one is set to start active. That's why it appears as bold in that list above. You can only have one active module of each type at a time. So if you have multiple like this set to start active, then you'll see an error in the firearm component. Okay, so taking a step back, the way that the firearms work in Neo FPS is that they're built out of all these different modules. So the triggers, the shooters, aiming, reload, recoil, and so on. Each of these is a separate module type with various options to pick from. As I mentioned, you can only have one of each type active at any one time. And the way the mode switching works is it allows you to group these modules up and then change which ones are active. So here, for example, this one is set to start active, semi-auto is set to false, and burst fire trigger is set to false too. You'll also notice the drop-down here labeled activation mode. And what that means is that if we were to activate this semi-auto trigger component here, then the firearm will automatically deactivate the automatic trigger component itself. If this automatic trigger was set with the activation mode as game object, then it would disable the auto trigger by deactivating the game object that it's attached to instead of just the component itself. And this is useful for when you want to move the firearm modules to child objects instead of the root for things like an attachment system, where you want switching modes to also change the render meshes and things like that. So yeah, here we have the semi-auto trigger and we have the burst fire trigger. It should be fairly obvious how they work. And then somewhere on here we have the modular firearm mode switcher component. And this controls which modules are tied to which modes. So looking at the inspector, we have this add mode button here. So every time you hit that, it adds a new section. And each of these sections is a firearm mode. And the top mode is the one that's active on start. You give your mode a name. This is the name that appears in the hood above the ammo counter. And then you essentially just pick the components to use for that mode. So clicking the plus button here, and this will give us a list of all of the firearm modules on the weapon and its children. These foldouts here are child objects with modules attached, while the single entries are the modules on the root. You can also use this filter near the top of the inspector to filter out which of the module types appear in that list. So we can pick just the aimers, just the triggers, and so on, or some combination thereof. Let's set this to nothing and then add aimers. And now if I hit the plus, then we will only see the different aimer modules on the weapon. And there we go. 
So whenever you hit the switch modes button in game, it will just cycle through these different modes, wrapping around from bottom to top again. That just means that it activates all the different modules that are listed here. The firearm itself then deactivates the old module of that type automatically, based on that activation setting that we looked at before. And it really is just as simple as that. Now the other thing you might notice here is this on switch modes event up top here. And in this case, what I've done for the assault rifle is I've tied that event to the additive jiggle component, which is here on the local weapon object. And it just calls that component's jiggle method. So that component is one of the procedural animation components from the FPS. And that's what makes the gun bounce each time you switch modes. But you can also tie that event into a bunch of things. You could tie it into an animator component to set a switch modes trigger parameter, or to a custom script that handles more complex feedback like unique animations per mode. You can even add multiple event handlers here. So you could tie it into audio scripts, animations, and all that lot at the same time. Okay, so that was the assault rifles firing modes. Let's have a quick look at the sniper rifle as well. So this is the one we want. Demo facility firearm sniper rifle. And if I open up this prefab and take a look at the firearm component in the inspector, then you can see here this aimer section with a whole load of options available. And then on the right hand side, we have this eye icon. And this means that this module is on a child object, not the root. So if I was to click the eye there, then this will highlight the object with the module on in the hierarchy. I should point out here that this only works if you have the prefab open for editing. If you just have it selected in the project view, then these child objects can't be pinged without opening the prefab, so the eye just doesn't appear. But anyway, if I select the object that it pinged, then you'll find on here all the different render geo for that scope. Along with the weapon move aimer module, and a firearm mode switcher component as well. So the mode switcher component does not need to be on the root of the firearm. You can only use one at once uh, because the way that it works is that when you make an object active with the mode switcher component attached, then it will register with the firearm at that point. If you have multiple objects with multiple mode switches, then essentially the last one to activate will end up being the active mode switcher. So just bear that in mind. Anyhow, if we look at this firearm mode switcher, then we can see here we have this first mode, which is scope. And this is the weapon move aimer that we have just above it on the object. And then we have a second mode, which is red dot. And this is pointing at optics, red dot RMR, weapon move aimer. So if we open up the hierarchy, then there's a child object of this scope called optics, red dot RMR. And on here is a weapon move aimer. And this is the holographic sight that sits on top of the scope. I'll just see if I can zoom in. Okay, there we go. So there's the scope, there's the red dot, and the mode switcher switches between them. So essentially we switch to red dot and the mode switcher enables this component here. This tells the firearm, I am now the active aimer module and the firearm disables the component for this aimer and then vice versa when we switch back. And yeah, that's how you can package modes up on children. So it's a pretty simple system. But then the other thing about it is that there's a lot of flexibility for you to activate these different components yourself using different means. So let's have a look at a simple example of that. So here I've opened up the firearms tutorial scene and I've just selected a simple pistol. This is just a copy of the swappable inventory pistol so that it works with the character here. And then this will be our starting point. If I hit fire here, then it's just a regular pistol, nothing to it. So if I was to exit play mode and open up this gun prefab, then we can check out the different modules attached. And the one I want to look at is this weapon move aimer. So this handles the aiming down sights for the gun. And this has a couple of unity events attached, uh, on aim up and on aim down. And what we can do is if I go to the modular firearm component and the triggers section, and I'll add this burst fire trigger, which will appear down at the bottom. Let's move that up to the semi-auto so we can see them both together. And we'll switch off the start active setting for this new burst fire trigger. Otherwise default settings are absolutely fine. 
So what we can do is we can add a slot to each of these events and we can drag the modules in here. So on aim down, we're hip firing and we want the semi-auto trigger. Where are you? There you are, okay, to be enabled. And we want the burst fire trigger in on aim up. It actually doesn't really matter which of these you drag in here since they're on the same object. This field is actually just an object picker, uh, but in the drop down that you get, these are the components on it, and then you pick the property or the method that you want to affect. So enable, we set to true. And now if I hit play, then we have a semi-auto trigger when we hit fire, and then when we zoom, we have a burst fire. I mean, they should probably be the other way around, really, but you get the point. So yeah, a number of new FPS components have these Unity events attached that you can tie into to unlock extra functionality. You can also write your own scripts to enable the different modules, and then trigger those scripts through events, custom input handlers, activating game objects, and so on. An example of using scripts from the demo scenes is the laser pointer on the demo facility assault rifle. This one caches the active aimer module on start, and then when you switch on the laser, it enables its own cantered aimer module, giving you a much clearer sightline. And then when you switch it off again, it re-enables the old module. Okay, now lastly, there is also another easy way for you to define your own mode switching behavior, and that is to inherit your own scripts from the modular firearm behavior. So if I open up the modular firearm script in Visual Studio, and in here I search for switch mode, here we go. So you can see this switch mode function here is actually virtual. This means that you can write your own scripts using modular firearm as the base and just add a method that overrides this one here to completely change up the way that the mode switching functionality works. The switch modes input will then be caught by the firearm and your new method will be called instead of the default behavior. So there you go. That should be everything you need to get started with adding your own weapon modes and functionality. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, then just head on over to the Discord and say hi. There's a link in the description, and that's generally the best place to go to get support or discuss Neo FPS. If you do, then I'll see you there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.